Josh Johnson Show. Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, Phil Stamp comedian Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, <laughs> I so I'm in Sacramento right now, mm-hmm. and I went out with some comics after the show, and one of the comics had I'm, I'm I believe uh, was his girlfriend with him, and. <laughs> We went to a barcade, right? Mm-hmm. And barcade closes. We we leave the barcade, and almost immediately, this was like this is such an awkward set of events. So basically, <laughs> I I'm talking to another comic, and the other comic and his girlfriend are standing behind me, and it's just a, a big group of us, right? Mm-hmm. And so then. This guy, I hear, I hear some like not yelling, angry yelling, but some yelling behind me. And then, as the guy's passed me now, um, the comic that I was with, who stand next to his girlfriend, like, "You're good, you're good, you're good, just go, you're good," you know, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. then the other guy kind of keeps talking and then walks fully into a pole and then bounces from walking into the pole into a bush, right? And okay, and the Real other pinball situation. Yeah, the other guy's like, "Hey, you're good. Just keep going. Just keep going, right?" <laughs> and so then I ask him because I was almost about to say something of like, "Yeah, you know, it happens, man. Like, it's all right, whatever." Right. And then I turn around and everyone's trying not to laugh. I'm like, "What happened just now?" And they tell me that that guy was trying to catcall his girlfriend. Okay. Okay. But, but he clearly didn't. He clearly didn't want to do it when he was too close because he passed them. So he didn't start okay. catcalling, I guess, until he was running distance away because it's very clear they're together, right? Right, yeah. And so then he's so busy catcalling that the guy, the guy is like, hey, you're good. You know, just keep, just keep walking. Like he was like just trying to get rid of him, right? Right. But then he's like still so focused on catcalling while his head is fully turned that he walks into the pole and then bounces from the pole into the bush. And so I'm glad I said nothing because in my head, I thought he was trying to make that dude feel better about walking into a bush. Mm-hmm. And so then okay. that's why I was almost like, hey, yo, it happens to me too. Like, it's all good, <laughs> man. Don't be embarrassed. It's okay. But what yeah. was really happening. I was happening, in a bush earlier. Don't worry about it. You're doing great. What was really happening is that he was getting shot down by the the girlfriend the other guy was like not getting upset but he was just like hey you should probably just keep walking yeah and then he walks into a pole and then into a bush and for me i don't know i don't know how to describe it maybe maybe i'm just one of those people that like genuinely assumes everyone moves to the world like i do and so then I just saw a guy. I didn't I forgot he was connected to the yelling that I heard before. I just saw a guy walk into a pole pretty hard. Mhm. And then walk into a bush as he tried to recover. Right. You know? And so for a second my heart went out for him and then and then I was like, "Oh, you you could have avoided this entire thing." Right. Cuz I almost thought they knew each other cuz it was like, "Hey, you good? Yeah, yeah, you good." Like cuz he's being <laughs> he's being cheery about it. So it's right, not he's yeah. not like, "Hey, you good? Keep moving." He was just like, "Ah, you good." Hey, hey. Yeah. I mean, but this this ties again into what we were talking about last week with with how these situations just find you. Well, also and right just there even be in a group. Be in a group in a, a situation will find you. Be in a group in that, but also like you said, you're, maybe that's part of it, too, is your perception of it is always a little different. Because right away you were just like, oh, another silly cartoon man in a bush. Yeah. Yeah, no. It's it's it's, it's, it's also one of those things where I, I'm starting to, like, like when we were out and that happened, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see how situations pop off. Because the guy was also, the comic was like... Uh, yeah, one of the reasons I was just trying to get rid of him as soon as possible is that in this area, you never know who has a gun, you know? Yeah, sure. And and I was like, And yeah. by this area, you mean America. Sure, sure. 
<laughs> that goes for any space anywhere. <laughs> and, and I'm not going to lie to you, Matt. It did get me thinking. Almost immediately it got me thinking about how about how like if you were embarrassed like if I, like if I if I walked into a bush mm-hmm. and I had a gun I think that just to like a gun is such a social reset that I think that if I walked into a pole and then a bush I think I would just fire off the gun cuz then everybody's forgetting that I walked into a <laughs> pole and then a bush <laughs> You know what I mean? It's almost a gun is right. a gun is almost except the opposite of that men in black stick that makes people forget because once you pull the gun out, no one remembers anything before the gun. <laughs> it's just true Fair. adrenaline, you know? So if you had your fly down and somebody was like, Oh, hey, your fly is down and you were super embarrassed, you really just need to pull a gun out and then like no one's hmm. thinking about your fly anymore. Um this would just be a good place for maybe a quick legal disclaimer of this is a satirical podcast. Uh, you should never pull out a gun to solve any situation ever. Uh, Josh Johnson or other employees of the Josh Johnson show do not believe you should pull out a gun. But if you had a gun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you had a gun and then somebody was like, there's spinach between your teeth. And you were just like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Fire one into the seal. <laughs> I mean, a gun is a social reset. Is like a, I don't know, like a Nirvana lyric or something. That sounds like, <laughs> that, that sounds like that sounds like such an angsty song title. <laughs> yeah, a gun is a social reset. <laughs> Yeah, wow. that's one way of thinking about it. I just mean, like, if that dude had genuinely had a gun mm-hmm. and then pulled it out, the bush is, like, the furthest thing from my mind now. I don't know. I'd have a hard time not remembering that. Because, honestly, my first thought might just be, like, oh, he'd fallen in the bushes. It was embarrassing. So he's, he wanted to shoot his way out of that scenario. I think I think it would be that because that's the conversation we're having right now. I think that... I think that if you were standing with us, especially to say that we didn't all yeah. know what happened until later when we discussed it, I right. think that you would just be like, that guy had a gun. Okay, but I, I, the bush is still going to be my mind, because if anything, it's going to be a man jumped out of a bush with a gun. <laughs> yeah, which so, is still... So the, the No, it's still going to be, yeah, not the original story, but, it's still but the bush better will, for him, too, because now he's jumped out of a bush with a gun. <laughs> Instead, of he walked into a bush, took a 10 second pause. Right. You yeah. could see him contemplating his life, and then he you know, pulled out the gun. Fair. Yeah, a frazzled mm-hmm. man fell out of a bush, and he was armed. Yeah, yeah. So it had to make you wonder where was he coming from? Had he just fought off the bush people? Yeah, that's true. Is he a hero? Why didn't he fire on them? Why is he is firing this- at the air? Yeah, is that bush some sort of, is it like a line which wardrobe situation? That bush leads to a different kingdom that needed to learn a lesson? <laughs> yeah, it just needed to be taught, you know, needed to be checked. Needed to be taught something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they had to appreciate what they had in life. Like if someone <laughs> came out of a bush with a gun, I don't even think you'll remember they came out of a bush. You'll just be like, someone is firing. No, I disagree. If, if they come out of the bush, like I'm going to be like, even if I'm running away, I'm going to be like, that man from the bush has a gun. Like, the bush is going to be on my mind. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to I'm not gonna immediately know or think about how he got to the bush. The the bush, because to me, then he, it's not just a dangerous man with a gun. That's a dangerous man with a gun who's also maybe magic. You know what I mean? He's some yeah. sort of, some sort of angry forest sprite. Yeah. I mean, because who has had enough? Because I didn't, I didn't even hear the cat calling. But from from their perspective, the whole thing was probably so much funnier than what I saw. Because by the time I saw him, he was about to walk. Like I was about to warn him about the pole, because his head was fully turned. <laughs> right. And so then he walks in, and the way I didn't know that there was a worse way to walk into a pole than head on. If you walk into a pole when 
when you just just off of this one person. So I, I guess I don't have much data to go on. But if you walk mm-hmm. into a poll while your head is completely turned, you definitely almost bite your tongue. Definitely bite your tongue. Uh, extra disorienting because you're not sure what's hitting you. Yeah, he probably thought it was a guy. Probably. Yeah. And it's skinny, too. So even if you put your arms up to like push off of it, you're going to miss. And the worst so it's part. It's not like you walked into a wall. <laughs> Is that if he had gone the other direction, he wouldn't have hit any bush at all. But he tried to like recover too quick. This person's also probably clearly drunk. Tried to recover too quickly. And then in his attempt to sort of like spin out of it and still look cool, he went into a right. bush. Right, yeah. And then he he tried to spin out of that and make it look cool. <laughs> and then got he fell hit into by something car. else. <laughs> He tried to roll off of that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fell into a manhole. <laughs> yeah. All the while screaming. It's all good, shorty. It's, it's all, all good. good. <laughs> uh, how was the how the shows so far in, in Sacramento? I know you got a couple more. Yeah, tonight. they're good. Yeah. So we have uh, two more. And yeah, it's been fun, man. It's been uh, a good time. Too bad. I, too sorry I'm not there. Oh, you know, it's okay. There's there's gonna be other shows yeah Uh, no i don't but we're uh we're right now uh now that i'm home and not in sacramento with you i'm helping jess watch uh her infant nephew for a couple days and i was so sure you were about to say a tv show (laughs) like i'm helping jess watch game of thrones (laughs) well there's too many names to keep track of you know all this you know lore and stuff and so i I keep charts for her i let Mm -hmm. her know yeah, um, you have the map from the beginning of the books. Yep. Yeah, I have all that up there. We put pins in it for each new place. Okay. We see mm-hmm. in Westeros, and uh, yeah, it's going well. Um, she's having a hard time, you know, keeping the Starks separate, you know, but that's fine. She'll get there. Yeah. I got flashcards for her. We're gonna work on that tonight. I honestly, I, I started Game of Thrones now, and I am at season five, episode three. Oh, did you never watch it before? No, I never watched it before. Oh, I thought you watched it when it was on. No, 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 no. I, I'm glad that I didn't because my friend who loves it, read yeah. the books, loves it, right? Right. He is like, once you get to season six, just stop. Yeah, that's and, true. You're getting, and you're I getting was like, the really? warning. And he was like, yeah, anything past season six just ruins everything because it's so hard to follow it technically doesn't make sense and because you know in your head that the this is a studio thing not a story thing yeah because because hbo rushed it like that's the other thing about letting stuff well, like HBO that go didn't. public is like yeah is like they apparently they went to the author of the books mm-hmm. and and just in in a general meeting about more seasons and renewals and all that stuff asked him how how many more seasons there were in the story like if it were to play out the way it had been playing out and apparently he said three and i guess that was too much because they want star wars and so well but that was yeah that's not hbo that was the creators the oh the creators weiss sorry sorry weiss sorry. and benioff because hbo yeah. wanted to keep going and uh, martin wanted to keep going they they all wanted to do 10 seasons that's right. I'm yeah. My bad. My bad. It's but the, not HBO's but Weiss and Benioff wanted to leave and, to do Star Wars, which they ultimately lost. Also, probably because they yeah, <laughs> fucked up the landing it. to yeah. Game of Thrones so bad. Yeah. So basically, I'm excited no, to the almost be done. Not because I don't love it. I'm really enjoying it. But because this is I a rare thing. This is the rare rare thing where mm-hmm. you either start a show so late that the world is so far removed that there's like i've encountered no spoilers i mean to be fair i've been binging it so i've like i've torn through like you know a third of a season in a day sort of thing but also the cool thing is that someone is giving me a warning that i will that i definitely need to to enjoy the overall thing more than some people who love it that's what's so crazy it's like oh, bro, he I, loves I it more it than I do. On. Yeah, so yeah. you love it. Like people Dude, love I loved it, it way and I'm, more. And here's the thing, and I fucking agree. Yeah, stop, stop when you get to that point because it does. It ruins your love of the show. 
Wow. Like it was my it was like my favorite show and that last season fucked it up so hard for me. Like I don't care anymore. Like I hardly it, it like I mean, it, it like killed it in the social consciousness for a little while. We didn't like no one wanted to talk about Game of Thrones for a few years. You know what's also funny about that, but the, what's almost good about that, in a sense, is that that's why I'm not encountering any spoilers because everything. You, what, yeah. What's crazy? So I remember we were also mad we stopped talking about. It. Yeah, I remember being on on uh, tour early on when it was ending, right? Yeah, and so early on in in uh, the tour with Trevor, it was it was ending, and Trevor was waiting to watch the whole season. So he was hearing how people were getting mad, but he was like, "Oh, you know, I'm just gonna like on a weekend where I'm off, binge the whole season, whatever." And everyone that I encountered, even when we would talk about it later, was so angry that there were no spoilers. Like it was it was. Uh, probably the angriest i've seen a lot of my chill friends that like i never actually see upset they were so mad that they actually couldn't spoil it because there was nothing coming out of their mouth but curse words it wasn't even plot yeah. points it wasn't even no, like yeah. like people because you know how with i mean i haven't watched the harry potter movies and i've read like mm-hmm. i read up to the fifth book and i i think i'd just have to start again if i was going to get into it right because uh, like sally's read them all and i think she's watched all the movies but um just something some i don't know something with life just like after the fifth book, I was I just genuinely did not have time, and mm-hmm. and then years passed. But um, at least when people didn't like something in the movie, they talked about it. Right. People hated the ending of Game of Thrones so much that it was like it was it was actually like um, it was like everyone finding out they had a secret child with the worst person they'd ever met. Like, you're yeah. not even getting the full story. You're literally just getting like, and how could that? Oh, like, no one was finishing sentences. Well, because a big part of it, it wasn't even just about how it ended. It's that it be, it was a different show in the last season. Like, oh. they completely, all the patience was gone. All of the, like, how they used to really slowly build up. When you, when you sprint a story like that, yeah, it's stupid. What made yeah. that show good yeah. was that they took the time to really build the lore, really dig into the characters, and build out that world. And in the last season, they're like, ah, fuck, we got to end this. And when you sprint through it, then it just becomes a silly little dragon story. Like, it just doesn't, it didn't feel the same. And I want to get out ahead of this now. Uh, I don't want, I'm not going to read any emails about Game of Thrones. Just telling you that right now. <laughs> I don't I don't want a bunch of emails either agreeing with us or trying to defend Game of Thrones. Not reading them. Just letting you know that now. All right. <laughs> just getting ahead of that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I mean, it would be funny to become a full Game of Thrones podcast. What a left turn that would be. That would be to be like, <laughs> to okay, like that. I would be on board for it if we just turned to a Game of Thrones rewatch podcast. <laughs> it'd be so crazy because it's like we're 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 like years in now. We're so years it's into like, this. It's <laughs> like, and we've never talked about a show for more than eight yeah. minutes. And so and there's a there's it, enough episodes of Game of Thrones to fill like an entire year of episodes too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could just do a whole year of just Game of Thrones. Yeah, just a companion podcast yeah. to watch <laughs> as you rewatch. That would be that would that would be so insane. What a, what a way but, to potentially tank the entire yeah. show is just and, like, wait, and we won't commit fully this? to it either because we will stop at the sixth season too. So we won't <laughs> we won't even do the full. Watch it's like doing the throne. first three episodes of Firefly as a podcast. It's just like, <laughs> what? Then why are you even talking about? Yeah, you know, we just really love that first little bit. <laughs> yeah. After that, I kind of stopped paying attention. But those first ones, I like. Yeah, yeah. We just uh-huh. <laughs> do like a Kim Possible podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just shows people have truly forgotten. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> we're gonna watch Perfect Strangers. Hey, they they did like seven years of that show. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I'm looking up now. What? Let's see. What show we're gonna do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's a good? Uh, we'll just do. <laughs> we'll become a Mr. Bean rewatch podcast. Because hey. that's mostly that's mostly all sight gags too, so it's gonna be hard to talk about. 
we just become a Bates Motel podcast. <laughs> Bates Motel. That's a good pick, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that was a show that was kind of popular in its first season, and then everyone just kind of forgot about it, and I think it ended now, right? It has to have. I think it actually got way more seasons to say that it to to say that it's over. It got way more seasons than years people were talking about it. How many seasons did it get? I think it got three. At three? I was thinking even four, maybe. Let me see. But yeah, I remember like everyone talked about that first season, and then everyone's like, "All right, neat." Something else came out. Five seasons. Yeah, the, Jeez. F- damn. Well, all right. Good on them. Get ready. Get ready for our Bates Motel. Well, it's not even rewatch. I never watched it to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. It's good to know right, what we're doing well, for the next for the next year. And yeah. A half. Get, Probably get three years. That, Five seasons. Five seasons depends how many they did a year. But I mean, yeah. If, what if you go at least ten episodes a season for cable usually? So you're looking at, at least probably fifty episodes or more. So that's a, that's at least a year. At least a solid year of <laughs> of Bates Motel. It would be what's what would be amazing is to do like a companion to it to a show that doesn't exist. Like just like I, just like following a show. Yeah. And like, I've I've pitched that idea to someone before and I think they said that, that they knew of somebody who was doing something like that. But, oh, I see. But I like the idea of that too, of just like just throwing in twists every now and then, mm-hmm. new characters. But you have to keep the canon consistent too. Yeah, you have to you have to actually build the show. One of the other things that happened when we were out last night. So I told you we went to that barcade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As we were waiting to get in the barcade, because there was a there's just something about being in um, in L. A. where there's more not L. A. but in California where there's more lines to get into places. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe it's because. In, in Brooklyn, unless the place is, like, super popping or unless everyone there going is, like, college age, no one really waits in line that much. Like, even when I'm in the city yeah. and I'm walking past bars and clubs, the lines are very short. And so yeah. I, we saw a couple lines to get into bars and stuff. And we <laughs> walk up to the coin op and there's a very short line. It's not a big deal. But the coin op? What did you say? Coin coin op is the barcade's name. Oh, okay. Uh, and we hadn't said that yet, so I didn't know if that was just a term I didn't know. No, no, no. Uh, and so basically, as we're in line, this guy passes by <laughs> and is yelling at the top of his lungs. He's like, "Hey, man, fuck coin op! All right, <laughs> <laughs> sick of y'all, man." Like just like just like yelling, just just indiscriminate okay. yelling, but also walking, like not not stopping, not talking to the staff or anything. Ran into a pole and I would, a gun. <laughs> I would love if there's a true backstory there. Like it seemed like something that a drunk guy was just doing for attention, but yeah, if Coin Op actually wronged him, and he only has a gripe with the overall establishment, nobody in it. That's one of the funniest yeah. things in the world to me. It's like when someone is like, man, I hate Taco Bell. But they don't even mean like, they didn't even have an, an, an interaction there. They didn't have yeah, an they event. Thing there. They just right. they just hate the idea that Taco Bell exists. And that's mm-hmm. what it seemed like was going on with this coin op. Because then even the guys checking IDs were like, yeah. Like, like they had a weird, I don't know if they knew him or if they were just like having a particularly exhausting day, <laughs> but he yells and they're like, yeah, to no one. It's not like they're talking to us and we're talking about it. And they're like, yeah, like, yeah. So either that way, that guy does that every night or, <laughs> or yeah, maybe there's something fishy about coin, coin op and they're even like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because hey, this guy works work, man. This guy seems like the Don Quixote of Coin Hop. Like he's just like <laughs> out here trying to joust that windmill, thinking it's yeah. a monster. Because you remember that scene, <laughs> Don Quixote, where he was riding around just going, "Man, fuck windmills." Yeah, <laughs> not doing anything else about it. <laughs> hey, everybody knows. Everybody remembers. Everybody's read the old Don Quixote. <laughs> the everybody's listened to the opera. <laughs> Fuck windmills. They're stupid. What do they even do? 
what do they even do? What do they even help with? You and know? then someone starts explaining to him what they do, and he's just like, man, <laughs> just rides away. Man, I don't really like magic, so Mm-mm. y'all Want keep to that. Do with it. Fuck your windmills. Um, I also like how I mentioned that we're currently watching a baby, and you had zero follow-up thoughts for that. <laughs> oh, it's just the way that you said baby. You took so long to say baby that I was like, this is a show. This is TV. <laughs> And so how has it been no. watching the – this is her There's infant a, nephew? Yeah, he's a, he's a toddler. He's a little under two. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I'm exhausted. And I'll be honest. I've hardly done anything. But <laughs> just – Like keeping you ha- up or what, what's, what's – No, what? not even – just having a child around just just gives you a level of anxiety where it's, where it's your responsibility to keep it alive. Okay. I mean, I believe what? you. I believe you. What's weird about that? There's nothing weird about that. I guess I just mean like, if, are you still stressed out if the if the baby's like sleeping? No, I was because I was asleep also. But oh, okay. No, but it's just like even today too. It's like Jess is with him and she's like, "Oh, go do your work. You gotta do." And I'm downstairs working, but that also means I'm actually gonna. She's gonna stop me every ten minutes to come watch him while she does something else. Oh, which is okay. I see. I I'm see. happy to help, but it does. It's just like it's a constant. It's on your mind. Wrench in your day. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just even when I'm trying to get you know to work on something, I still have to like, you know, she'll still be like, "Honey," and I'm like, "Okay," and like I don't, I don't blame her for that. If she needs help with something, I'm happy to help. But it is like, even that, you just can't actually have the time to go do the stuff you're normally doing. Mm. He's mostly chill, but like even just watching it for a little bit today, like one of the YouTube shows that calms him down. Uh, just watching it, just like <laughs> staring angrily at this cheery woman singing songs for children. And I'm like, I know it's a me problem. I know, I know, I'm the problem here. That's not what this lady's doing. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh, I just feel I feel myself being the monster. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. <laughs> you did. You did remind me of something though. This is like go for it. Just because you okay. Because you said like angrily at this cheery woman, when <laughs> when I was um, I had to be like early teens, maybe I was like twelve, thirteen, whatever. Uh, went to the fair, and this is like what we've talked about before on the show. It's like that parking lot type fair thing, right? Yeah, carnival. Yeah, like right. like circusy, you know. Yeah, carnival street a street fest. Yeah, maybe people would call it. You know. Yeah. And so we we go and as we're hanging out there, um, maybe maybe I went with Jacob. I'm trying to remember when you know who I was with and everything. But there was someone who was like, I guess selling pies, like just like true, you know, all American. Here's here's a pie that I just made and I'm selling like, it at the like fair or that. like you saying that with a question mark. <laughs> Almost makes it more seem like you don't know what pies are. <laughs> no, I know I know what a pie is. I'm just saying that it was it felt pies, weird. Pies, I think I don't know. It felt because I don't know if there was a pie contest, so it felt weird to let mm-hmm. this random person do this because this is a this is a place where everything is is like paid for and you and and it looks like it's part of the traveling thing. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So the yeah. funnel cake area wasn't just like a lady who loves to make funnel cakes and then she brought right. some from home. And so it it felt a bit odd. It felt like a county fair thing was happening at a carnival. Okay. Does that make sense? I get you. Yeah, I feel you. I mean, it's a little bit of both. Like it is a fair, so like, you know, I guess good on them. Anyway, <laughs> this lady is like so it she is so happy about her pies and she's like um, barking for people to come, you know, like taste a sample or get one of her pies or whatever, which already is not to me. It's something she's at. She's at like the heart area of the of the fair, and to mm-hmm. me, she should be near the parking lot because, like, who's gonna buy a pie and then walk around with it and do rides with it? Do you know what I mean? Especially like, like a full pie, like yeah. full pie. And so, I, in my head, I'm like. Hey, you're in like even even as a young kid, I was like, you should be where the cars are, where people are heading out, because then yeah. they they I mean maybe pie is driving food. Yeah, maybe she 
maybe she straight up just had done that before and realized, oh, people are full when they're leaving. So, like, let me be at the uh, heart of the sure. background, whatever. Because you definitely can't try to get in at the front because now nobody wants a pie now. Like, I haven't, I mean, I, I haven't been on any rides. I don't have yeah. a fork. Like, this is... Here's the thing. I appreciate the thought you're putting into it, but I think what you're touching on is that there's not a lot of ideal scenarios to just sell whole pies. No, no. Like, like, out, like out in the world, not in a store. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's too many there's too many variables. There's too many variables. It's just too messy, you know. It's too messy. It's yeah. It's a cumbersome treat. Um, and so <laughs> and and so <laughs> she's like barking for people to you know get the pies. And she, I think where she was was near the uh, hammer. Were you like the test your strength hammer? Yeah. Okay. So she was over there. So a lot of people were already going to try. And maybe she planned that. Maybe she wanted to be where an, an attraction was that was going to get a lot of foot traffic. But she's clearly getting on everybody's nerves. Like 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 hardcore. Because she's she doesn't have a lot of slogans. So it's just the same thing. And she's yelling. And it's just the same thing. <laughs> over and over, right? Yeah. So even as you're in line to play the sledgehammer thing, you hear this woman like 52 times. Okay. It's just too it, it's too repetitive and what what's happening is she's yelling at every person that passes instead of mm-hmm. every so often. Cuz let the sign do the oh. work. A, a yeah. sign is silent yelling. <laughs> you know? Yeah, sign is social yelling, a gun is a social reset. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you see a billboard, someone else might have screamed. They might as well have screamed. <laughs> For the effect that it has on you. And in fact, we should do that to create more jobs. <laughs> Let's get rid of billboards and just put a guy up there. I mean, it's going to take several guys. Even better, more jobs. Yeah. This is my platform that I'm running on. And so, basically... <laughs> no more billboards, just loud dudes. Basically, as as uh, she's getting on everybody's nerves and everything, this woman that's like from another booth and that she just has some other beef with walks up and her demeanor totally changes. Right. So she goes from like chipper, happy, everything just like stone face, like ready to ready to swing. It looks like, you know, like I didn't Mm -hmm. you ever see someone without knowing them. You see someone and then you see a change in them that's so fast you didn't think they'd be capable of it. Yeah. Like any, like like anyone who's yelling, like, because uh, that was a, that was other thing she was doing. She was yelling the, the like types of pies that she had. So she's just like rhubarb, pecan, pecan. Like it, it was just she had come up with a little rhythm for it, and it would have been cute to hear. <laughs> Sounded once. like she was gonna say pecan twice there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> rhubarb, pecan, pecan, rhubarb. It's like she's got two pies there. Yeah, rhubarb, pecan, pecan, rhubarb, chocolate, pecan, pecan, rhubarb. <laughs> but she had this like little rhythm to listing all the pies, you know? Right. And and so you see someone doing that with like a chipper face, and then when someone else walks up and their face just drops, right? Mm-hmm. So she over here, pecan, rhubarb, apple, chocolate, like, and then just nothing, right? Right. And then her and the other lady have words that are kind of quiet, like they're not yelling at each other or anything. But then pecan, I'm rhubarb, rhubarb, pecan, <laughs> rhubarb, pecan, pecan, rhubarb, apple, apple pecan, cherry, rhubarb, 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 pecan, apple, pecan, 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 rhubarb, pecan, rhubarb, rhubarb, <laughs> and then they both just turn into pies. <laughs> um. And so it's a pie witch. You know, you know pie witches. You know pie witches. Yeah, they go out there. And it makes you scared to eat the pie because you're like, is this a pie or is this a person? Is this this a pie witch? (laughs) And so then they're, you know, quietly talking and everything. And then the lady. (laughs) This shouldn't make me laugh as much as it makes me laugh. But then the lady who walked over who is having words with her. (laughs) is talking to her, maintains eye contact, and slides a pie off the table and then walks away. Hell yeah. Oh, it'd be a shame if something happened to this rhubarb. <laughs> Bam. You know, we've been talking you know, about for social a fee, uh, resets. For, 
A, social <laughs> ransom, yeah. all right? <laughs> I would hate for something to happen to this pecan, pecan, rhubarb, chocolate. <laughs> Perhaps for a small fee, uh, you know. We'll make sure you get through this carnival and or festival safely. Well, I already paid the fee for the booth. No, this is different. Nah, nah this is... Uh... Wait, let's so let's just say we're not uh, we're not with the festival. Look, let's just say I don't want anything to happen to those beautiful pecans. All right. Yeah, yeah. Sure, what'll happen, Bruno? And then he does the hammer thing. <laughs> 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 he's been waiting in line the whole time. <laughs> you think he's been waiting in line for the hammer test, and he's just been waiting with this guy. He's been waiting for the threat. So then this guy's been off to the side waiting for him to get to the front of the line to go do the threat. <laughs> also, pie goes all over them. Like, pie <laughs> goes all over everybody. <laughs> but, yeah, she just slowly – and the way the, – the, okay – this is like the, a cat. This is the other disrespect about it. She slid it off so slowly that the other lady could have saved it. <laughs> like, she maintained eye contact, but her hand is like... And then she's whispering. She's like... <laughs> rhubarb pecan. Pecan It's rhubarb. still on the table when it's here. Like, like she, she didn't Does pick the- one that was at the edge of the table. She slid <laughs> she slid Does, a pie from like the middle of the table. She had to take a step. She had to do a little do a little like traffic jam with the Yeah, the she had pies. to take a step to slide this pie <laughs> all the way off the table. Did the pie lady just not notice that she was pushing it? I think the pie lady was getting so pissed that she was just like, you ever get so mad that you don't She was react? just tunnel vision. Yeah, she yeah, was just tunnel was... vision like and it just, I what I'd like to believe they were whispering is just like Oh, you better not. You better not do that. Oh, I don't am. do that. I am going to do that because I don't you like do you and I don't you. Like you my pie. And I don't like go my pie. pie. And I don't like you what do you that. do with your life. How dare you? Right. My pie is so good. My and pie. Don't do it off oh. the table. Now Dang. it's off the table. I didn't want you to do that. Now there's grass in your pecans. Enjoy. Finally, your another pecan. ingredient. Enjoy your ant pie. <laughs> Bitch. It's ironic because I'm the pie ant. Yeah, but then uh, also she she took a second to like clearly was gathering herself, which I did I did feel a little bit bad about because it's annoying as she was yelling. It was like, well, now this person's just devastated, right? Right. And then uh, takes a minute to gather herself and then starts like uh, yelling again with the you know PK PK robot like all the stuff, but the, <laughs> but just with tears running down her face. <laughs> but the pie is still Rupert. on the ground. And she just never picked it up because I guess she felt like it would have been too much of a, of a step down you, to pick up the pie. What are you going to do with that? You know? What are you going to do with it? Then you got to find a garbage can or something, or you can't have a fucked up pie sitting on your table. Yeah. So, I think the best course of action is to pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah. Pecan, pecan, rhubarb, grass. <laughs> pecan, rhubarb, ground. Yeah. Um. Also speaking. Oh, that one? That one's not for sale. <laughs> that one's not for sale. Unless you're that bitch Heather. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell it to her for free. It's like, well, yeah. it's not really a sale then. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a gift, I think, what you just <laughs> Oh, it won't feel like a gift. She wants to put my pie on the ground. She can join my pies on the ground. She can have a little bit of that dirt flavor with some of that pecan. I mean, if she's the one that put it on the ground, she probably doesn't want it. It was. It sounds. It sounds like you're. You don't know what to do with this. No, You've she's gonna love before. it. All right, she's gonna love the PK. She's gonna love. Now the you dirt. think she's gonna like it? Interesting. Yeah, because <laughs> just burst out to tears. <laughs> you ever been in a fight before? I just wish I knew the backstory. It's just two middle-aged women that were like, that were like having words very quietly. But then, what an alpha I- move. Did you see where the other lady came from? Did she come from a different booth? No, but I saw her later behind like a squirt gun booth. Interesting. Yeah. So she wasn't even selling other foods. Like like a rival baked good. Yeah. That's, no, that was no, my no. first my first thing was like, ooh, these are rival. Yeah, it would be bakers. great. Pie versus funnel cake would be fire. Yes. Yeah, some yes, yeah. That thing. That's what I was hoping for, I guess. Honestly, if she like this is a person who's clearly unhinged though, because as as 
as minor of a thing as it is to do, it does feel like I felt like this was a crazy person when I was watching her. Oh, no, that's it's a wildly aggressive move. Yeah. And so (laughs) passively aggressive move, maybe. (laughs) And so what I will say is if she was running the funnel cake station, she would have come over with hot grease like like this this person. (laughs) Our saving grace is that she was behind the squirt gun thing, and those squirt guns can't move. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe they used that used to be the spot for the squirt gun booth. Oh they yeah, have, hey. They used to have that prime real estate. That could be it. The squirt, but the Pi squirt gun it. booth used to be near the sledgehammer. Yeah. Yeah. So it was always it was great back and forth money of people waiting for the hammer. They'd come over to the squirt gun, vice versa. And now this pie lady messed the whole yeah. thing up. And no one wants these damn pies walking around a carnival. Unless you're going to have a pie throwing game. Yeah. This is games. This is the game row. Yeah. Make a game out of this pie. And I got a new game for you. It's called Ground Pie. I got a new game for you. It's called Do You Have the Balls to Stop <laughs> Me <laughs> While I Slide a Whole Pie? Off of your table. Because also, yeah. look, this is the other thing, and and I don't know this woman's situation. I really don't. So I can only make fun of it so much because I'm sure there's a logical, maybe she had a van full of pies. But uh, <laughs> she did not have a lot of pies at that table. So by sliding a pie off the table, you took out like a fifth of her inventory. <laughs> really, really took down Dude, part of her There weren't that many really pies on stock. the table. So either she had already sold a bunch or she wasn't selling any, so she didn't bring any. Yeah. Because the fair is for the whole weekend. Yeah. And maybe she doesn't fully understand fairs and she th- she doesn't think that clowns are a part of it. They think clowns just come to it. Oh, and she's like, you know what, clowns clowns love pies. You know what I would <laughs> Pies and seltzer water, that's what I have. I, I didn't even see how much the pies were. I would love if just $25. to cover her costs. <laughs> yeah, just to cover her costs, each pie was $200. Like, <laughs> every slice of pie is full $200. And you said this is by the entrance. No, no, this wasn't by the entrance. No? This is in the heart of the, of the in fair. In the heart, yeah. okay, okay. That's why I was like, yeah. this doesn't make any sense. Like, why would I buy a pie and then ride around? But even the even the entrance isn't really like. There's, I don't know. I'm just not. When would I want a pie, a full pie? That's what I'm saying. The, the closer to the exit where the parking lot is seems like the best place. That's the mo- that's the best, but the best is still not good. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm still buying a <laughs> fucking carnival pie. Also, we got pie at home. Okay, we got pie at home. Yeah, I want I want the pie that a bunch of people have walked by and coughed on. And <laughs> yeah, someone's definitely farted on that pie. That's where I want to get my pie. Yeah, in a place full of <laughs> of old machinery and old games that have been touched by nine thousand people a year. Yeah, uh, that's where I want to get my my baked goods to take home. You know what I like sprinkled over my pie? rust from the ferris wheel from on high <laughs> yeah it's why when you go to a carnival you want deep fried stuff because then you at least know nothing survives that so <laughs> this listen this food might be nasty but at least it's clean you know what I mean? <laughs> no no germs survive that frying process <laughs> tell me i'm wrong i I feel like that's not quite. Ha- I I feel like you could still have dirty grease. I feel like you can that's, still have dirty grease. But, but I, so clean might be a stretch. Definitely burned. These germs are scorched. Yeah, it's 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 clean nasty. <laughs> it's the cleanest nasty you're gonna get. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so look, this thing, you you may even need to cut this because this may not be funny anyone but me. Ooh. But uh, usually means we're going to talk about it for a while. You know, you know, like an ick, like when you get the ick and stuff. The is are you talking about that in like the terms of I mean, of the terms of your stand up joke? How you do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like how <laughs> okay. you how you get the ick when you like someone, but you know, whatever. Um, See, that's something I learned about because of your stand up bit. I didn't know it was the thing people were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in case you don't know what the ick is, it's when you like someone. In this case, actually love someone. 
but then they do something that's so um it's such a turn off for you that you don't see them the same way and you get the ick and you either i mean sometimes you still continue on and then fall in love anyway but almost always you you just stop being yeah. being like attracted um, that's why it usually happens on the early end because once you love someone, it's very hard mm-hmm. to uh, get an ick that is because an ick is also innocuous. It's not like something obviously horrible and huge, right. you know. But you're saying when it happens later, you're you're less likely to like end the relationship, is what you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm because I I had an ick recently with Jess actually. Oh really? Um, yeah, because she said bagel instead of bagel, and it was a real. <laughs> was there something in her mouth? No, no, she just, just straight up said it. Just straight was like bagel, and I was like, that is, and I've and here's the thing, I've heard her say bagel before too. So this so was I've, just a mistake, or does maybe, she but think that it's pronounced either way? I don't know. I don't know. She got real close to it when she she said milk the other day, and it really sounded like milk with like an e, and I was like, hon, what's going on here? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 wild. It's not. It's not like some of them have come out of nowhere. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things where you're like, hey, let's let's baby, let's let we should go to a speech therapist together. You know, just together to like (laughs) see if we're still saying everything the same and you know feel good about how we pronounce things and stuff. Yeah. Let's just let's just set it. You know. Let's set yeah. what the pronunciations are. Let's does, agree together. Does your tongue feel like a tool or like it's in yeah. the way? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You feel, is there a lot of turmoil going on in there? Mm-hmm. I just want to know. Because mm-hmm. we can sort that out. Yeah. I don't know. It's not, that's not, that was just a joke. That's not like an ick, ick, but uh, it's every, <laughs> you say your mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or did you hit the table? No, no. I hit the mic. Uh, with my hand okay. pretty hard as I was trying to discreetly move. Um, well, it wasn't that discreet because you went, ow. Yeah, I just had to let it out. <laughs> so I was trying to be discreet about it, so I looked you in the eye and said, ow. <laughs> so uh, I was... I was uh, You know, like when you do a, a a show, and okay, you know, like when you do a show and the audience is like just tipsy enough, where mm. they're they're not fully making sense. Even when you ask more questions, it's not getting any yeah. better. Yeah. So I just asked this random couple what their ick was, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they, I still don't know who did it. It was a man and a woman sitting together. And I had asked the man, but then the woman spoke up. But then it sounded for a second like she was talking about herself. But then it seemed like okay. maybe the guy had done it. Basically, the ick that they both agreed they had was, this is so specific, but one of them, apparently one of them came home one night and from a long trip as well. So hadn't been home for a while. And they come home and their partner, because once again, they were so they were so like drunkenly trying to explain the thing that I could not gather who did what. I even asked them straight up at one point and then they busted out laughing instead of answering me. Okay. Uh, one of one of them came home from a long trip and their their significant other was seated on the floor in front of the TV with just an entire t- like a tin is the only way to put it like a like a baking pan tin deep deep like right out of the oven foil of pot pie and they had clearly been eating the pot pie from the tin on the floor and had gotten through quite a bit of it like had eaten half of it you know but like like it's like a full pie not like a mini one no no but like- not like a mini pot pie we're talking about it shouldn't even be called a pot pie because it's so big. It's a it's like a pot cake. <laughs> and so the, and they had so much pot pie on them because clearly they were drunk when they did it. 
So they drunk, like, I don't know how you stay drunk this long, because pot pies, like, homemade pot pies take forever, right? Yeah, especially if it's that big, you're going to have to bake it. You're not microwaving that. Or they did. (laughs) That's why it's so messy, is they broke this thing in half and shoved it in the microwave. And then clearly ruined the microwave, because you can't put that much metal in a microwave. Nope. (laughs) Yeah. And so so then they're sitting. They're sitting... (laughs) They're sitting on the floor with like, just like yeah, first of all, the spatula is their utensil. So they don't even have a fork or a spoon. They are eating straight from the spatula. They're eating spatula at a time pot pie, right? Mm-hmm. And the pot pie is on the floor. And the thing, the thing that kept popping up to me was like the kid in Matilda eating the cake. Because I'm like, you, you, <laughs> you've got a lot of pot pie to get through. Yeah. And they and they're clearly putting in work because it's like half gone or whatever. But they've just got so much pot pie juice spilled on their shirt, and it it looks insane. It looks like a grown toddler, like like you you you're watching this infant. Imagine if that mm-hmm. infant now was 150 more pounds mm-hmm. and yeah. like middle aged. In front of the TV, had a job and knew how to bake a full pot pie that must have at least been decent because you've eaten half of it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like a a, a kid that never learns to like not like to stop chewing his shirt, you know, and getting it all yeah spit, you know. But now he's now he's forty and still does that. I forgot until you said that. I forgot any kid did that. Uh, I'm around too many. That's of them. so funny. <laughs> and so yeah, so they come home and the, the they're just like sitting it like almost in pot pie because they've also spilled a ton because it's a slated uh, spatula. So it's like oh, it's great. one of the spatulas where like clearly juices are gonna go through. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And so there's just like pot pie on the lip. It's like pot pie on their chin. It's all down the shirt. It looks like they jumped in the pot pie. Right, yeah. Like they dove it, and so they're just they did a, they did a slip and slide with with pot pie. Yeah, and the, and pot pie slip and slide. Apparently, the game that's sweeping the nation. They're not even sitting like crisscross. They're sitting with legs open, with the pie as close to the thighs as they could get it. So they're eating over the pie, but it's okay. also like on the floor. And that's why I said the toddler thing because they look like how a toddler would. And eat. this is. This is a couple that's still together. This is a couple that's still together, but then we're together at this point. And I, yeah, and then I'm like, yeah, that's a that's a I'm just gonna walk situation. Like keep the house, keep everything in it. I'm gonna go. Yeah, right? yeah. But the thing that's, I'm gonna change my name. I'm here's my phone. I'm smashing it in front of you so you know not to call me. The the thing that's so wild about it is that they were both agreeing, which means whoever did this gave the other person the ick and gave themselves the ick. Hmm. Because they were both like, oh, this is the most disgusting thing I had ever seen. But one of them did it. Well, and the fact that they were together when it happened, because honestly, to to be that drunk and eating a full pot pie like that sounds like one of them got dumped. Yeah, no one should be doing this in a happy life. No, that's not, you, you, that's not behavior for when you're doing well. Yeah, yeah. That's not that's just, not just like mentally and emotionally. Hey, you know, my girl's out of town, so you know you know what the boys go do. Yeah. Full pot pie weekend. Okay. <laughs> we go get pie we go get nasty with it. All right. We go get we getting baked. And when yeah. I say baked, I mean pot pie yeah. baked every day. Okay. God God the boys slurp some gravy. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> It's going to be juicy. You're going to be slipping. Yeah. Yeah. Crusty at the top. Getting them veggies in. Yeah. I mean, the boy. Maybe a little bit of uh, stew meat in there just to spice it up, you know? Yeah. Just like grandma used to make. Just like. OG bro. Just like grandma used to make, except way too much that grandma never made. You know, she did a reasonable (laughs) amount. I'm a ball out. She made the right amount. She she made the right amount. She was a responsible woman, but not me. But not me. You know what I mean? I got to flex on them. And by flex on them, I mean get so sick that I cannot flex a single muscle. You know? Yeah. Now give me the spatula with the biggest holes in it. Give me give me the spatula that'll let people know, hey, I eat like a baby. Yeah. These clothes, they don't go in the wash. 
They go, <laughs> they go in the fire. Yeah, not my lucky shirt. Okay. <laughs> nah, uh. Mm. These clothes will not be saved because it's about to get so crazy in here. I'm about to be soaked in pot juice. Shit. All right? We might have to buy a new house. Yeah. For how wild it's gonna get this weekend with the pot pies and the boys. Hey, when I, and when I say the boys, I do mean just me. I mean me by myself. I have trouble making adult friends. <laughs> also, bye, bye, bye. Also, we have a carpet, so this living room will be ruined, okay? <laughs> <laughs> There's certain decisions you can't make with carpet that I'm going to make anyway because I'm nice like that. <laughs> See, now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and combine these stories and say that this is how the pie lady who got bullied at the fair reacted. She went home and <laughs> Got drunk and made a pot pie. <laughs> and made a pot pie and just spilled most of it on herself. Just spilled most Which of it. Which is also very hot. Like that, like if you burn yourself, have you Do ever you burned yourself with a pot pie before? I'm, sure. I mean, I burned myself with, with many food. Well, I'm I just, this is my memory. This is why I'm no, like, something. this person is living foul is because, <laughs> is because when I was little, one of the first things that I, I, use the oven for because it was a big deal that i was using the oven when i was a, mm-hmm. a little kid because so, for so long i was told not to touch it and then right. finally they were like you're old enough that if you want something that gets made in the oven you can put it in you just have to follow the instructions and so i yeah. remember <laughs> this is so insane i remember um wanting a pot pie i think i was at my grandma's house i wanted a pot pie and <laughs> This is so dumb. I wanted a pot pie, and they were like, follow the instructions. I followed the instructions, and they were watching over me as well to make sure I was like doing Mm -hmm. it right. Preheated the oven, got it to 400, took out the the pie out of the box, undid the film, everything. Like, and then, you know, put the pie in. I was feeling Mm -hmm. like a big boy, right? And then, uh, you know, I the the oven clip that audio to use later <laughs> the oven like big boy didn't have a timer on it or at least the timer didn't work so i had to keep time myself so i was watching the clock because the clock said in 20 minutes the pot pie is going to be ready it was a little mini one right right and so i'm yeah. just watching and every so often i'm even having like panic attack is a strong word for it but i'm even having moments of like freaking out because i'll i'll be watching tv and then remember, mm-hmm. I haven't checked the clock in a while. So I'm like, huh, oh, huh, did I miss it? You know what I mean? Like, because I want the right. perfect golden brown pot pie to prove that I could use the oven. You know? Yeah, you got a lot riding on this. Yeah. And so. It's an important pot pie. So then uh, I see the I see the time. I'm freaking out because it's like it's 20 minutes. I looked just as it was turning 19. And so I remember counting down the seconds on the, the uh, clock because I thought that's how cooking mm-hmm. worked. Like, I thought that. At 20 minutes, it would be perfect. And so yeah. so then I lower the oven door and like somehow, whether whether I wasn't told or I just forgot, somehow information about oven mitts had slipped through the cracks. <laughs> so it doesn't even occur to me to grab an oven mitt. Yeah. This, you know? Yeah. And so... You didn't know this was a thing that existed. Yeah. And so I... <laughs> just reach on in i reach in and grab the pot pie right now the pot pies um 10 that it's in is like a foil type aluminum you know around mm-hmm. it that it cooks in yeah and and so i reach in i grab it i the way that i grab it is i grab uh with my index finger and just the the i guess like inside of my thumb around the foil part but then I end yeah. up putting my thumb in the pie when I'm grabbing it to pull it out. Oh. And so I pull, put my thumb in the pie. I'm burning. Like my, my, I think my thumb is going to burn off because I didn't realize that it would be this hot. I, I didn't like finish in my head what cooking, like how to get something right. out of the oven. And so yeah. I, it's to the point where I'm, my finger's already in. And so even in pain, I pull the pot pie out of the, of the oven. Yeah. Like I just, I just rip it out real quick, right? This mm-hmm. all happens so fast. It's not like I have a blister or anything. Like, like my thumb is clearly burned and hurt. Uh, right. And I want to cry because I'm little. But I also don't want to give away that I've, 
made such like an insane mistake. Like I like like as soon as my right. thumb is in the pie, I realize I've I've done yeah. something horribly wrong. You, you know this is going to affect your final score. It's going to affect my ability to use the oven, which is also yeah. going to affect the snacks that I get because sometimes yeah. I want something. And my grandma didn't feel like making it or didn't feel, you know, so if I can do something yeah. myself, I can have it whenever I want. This is, no, this is a big moment in your life. This, you're leveling up as a big boy. And so my thumb goes in the piping hot pie, right? That's mm -hmm. how I know you it's done. You yourself. Is, yep. because, is because steam is, <laughs> steam is shooting between my thumb and yes. the pie. <laughs> and so I rip the pie out. I like set the pie down on the oven door that's that's all like all the way down i then mm -hmm. realized this is what oven mitts are for and so yeah. i grabbed the oven mitts and then you know grab the pie put it on the counter and everything and nursing my thumb and uh i like this is like so this is like so devastating i'm eating the pie later like i let it cool for a sec because i'm like really hurt mm -hmm. i'm like sitting there like oh and i'm trying to hide it as well because i just don't want anybody to know how badly i messed up you know yeah and and so i'm like really like like nursing but like try i'm trying to not let my thumb touch anything while not showing it's hurt and so then it's time to eat the pie but i burn i burn the uh the thumb that i eat with normally so i eat a lot with my left hand and so I burn my left the thumb. thumb. That, the thumb that you eat with, though, makes it sound like you just dip your thumb into things. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how you... <laughs> just stab just stab food with my thumb and then into my mouth. Yeah, instead of counting calories, I just eat a thumb full at a time. And then, <laughs> you know, 100 thumbs and you're full. I eat 100 thumbs a day. And so then I, <laughs> I can't now grab the fork because this thumb hurts so bad. That mm -hmm. I can't like grab the fork and eat the pot pie. And so yeah. I use my right hand, which I'm not, I'm like a left handed person. And so I am completely missing my mouth. Like, I, like, <laughs> you think eating was an ambidextrous thing? And is, is, for me, it's just clearly not. So I am missing my mouth and burning my lip with hot pot pie because yeah. I'm. Yeah, there's. <laughs> Because I'm just using the wrong hand, like in a in yeah, a weird are, way, I don't even know how to hold the the uh, the fork. No, I know, and it's it, the and the problem is too is it's high stakes. You got high stakes to suddenly be ambidextrous because not only are you trying to show you're a big boy, but what you're wielding is hot. Yeah, and hot so and messy. I've, so it's like this is you, this is a lot. This is a lot on a little guy. So I've got one thumb in the air just to cool, right? And then I, I've got my other thumb on the fork. And I'm just, and it, it's crazy. I actually feel like I was in, like I was in an accident or something. I'm relearning to use my limbs because I've never even tried to to eat with my right hand Jeez. before. Yeah, definitely, definitely the same thing. No, I'm just saying it's like, it's like because I'm trying to eat with my right hand for the first time and hold a fork, right. it's like not even occurring to me how to do it. Like, like it's it's genuinely. I have to think about how I would do it with my left. Try to mirror it with my right hand. Stab the pie. Lift it up and not like fling it into my own face. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because the crust is super hard. Mm -hmm. Like if it was just if it was just already all broken off, then maybe I'd have a better chance. But the the crust is also hard. So I'm like I'm not even aware of how much pressure to put on the fork. Like all this is going through my head because I'm like still trying to hide that my thumb is like my thumb is red by the way like, like my, probably probably quite burned yeah, actually yeah. so I don't have a blister but my thumb is like it doesn't look like my thumb you know yeah yeah and yeah no it was terrible <laughs> wow some some pot pie trauma. Yeah, yeah. Because then the worst part is that I did all that of like thinking about like calm down, PPSD, accept the stress pain. disorder. Yeah, <laughs> accept the pain. Know that you you can use your right hand to eat. Don't freak out. Yes. All right, this is possible. turns out a lot of people do it. A lot of people use yeah. their right hand for eating. And so then I remember I finally got like a respectable forkful of pot pie, right? Some mm -hmm. peas, some carrots, a little bit of meat. I was like, I was doing it all. 
And then when I went to put it in my mouth, it burned my tongue. And I was like, I think I'm done for the day. Like, I, I. <laughs> you just walk into your mom, just be like, I should not be trusted with the oven. Uh, I'm not ready for the <laughs> oven. Also, I may need all the doctors because my thumb yes. is, feels ruined. Yes. I don't know if you can see my thumb bubbling. Uh, yeah. But that is part of why I think I should not be trusted with the oven thank you for this experience mm-hmm. uh which i'm sure I'm was no really thanks. just to give you a break <laughs> yeah i'm i'm sure you saw this as a a way to do less for me and for me to be more independent and i'm gonna let you know now that no yeah just gonna let you know that i'm gonna say no i'm also and gonna throw you, out there that i after the thumb thing i put a band-aid on it because in my head all band-aids made things better well that's that's just child logic yeah a band-aid will fix it but because now, at least when my finger was in the air, I like nothing was touching it, whatever. Now with a Band-Aid on, it's constantly being touched. Like, like yeah, like now, anytime I move my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah. If you put a Band-Aid on it, you feel the blister grow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you feel it actually <laughs> from beginning to end wow. be created. This Band-Aid is getting tight. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. This was a. Uh... I wasn't expecting so much pie drama for mm. for this episode, but it's what happens. Um, hey, real quick before we go, should we open up the mailbag? Yeah, let's do it. I got one thing, just because I think this will go perfect with the sentiment of uh, <laughs> a gun is a social reset. <laughs> for uh, <laughs> because that's kind of a I'd say a, maybe an emo statement or something. So how about we look at the return of Goth Josh? There we go. It's a new one. This is from Mike, and it's it's post-apocalyptic Slenderman Goth Josh is what we have. So this one here, look at that. You look badass in this. How, it how is, do you feel about this? I mean, this? it is very well drawn. This is wild. It's like something out of Sandman. Yeah. Yeah, this is, like, truly wild. <laughs> and then they also put this one down here. Uh, it says, I'm not sure if Josh digs Afro Samurai, but here he is. So this must be a, a different take on it. That one won't enlarge, but. Yeah, wow. Wow. So there you go. A couple different. We'll put those in the video, probably post them on Instagram. But uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Those, those are, are both uh, very those cool. Are some, those are some gnarly goth Joshes slash Samurai Joshes slash post-apocalyptic Slenderman Josh's. Yeah, that that the other one looks like Straz Samurai Jack. Like I don't know the if I'm a here. good guy or a bad guy, but I'm in it. Yeah, yeah, you're a, you're a mysterious uh, figure in the distance watching them or something. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Mike, and thank you for listening. Well, you know we had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Uh, if you're looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube where we post clips of the show. You can also find me on at Josh Johnson on Twitter and Josh J Comedy on Facebook if you still use it. And if you're looking for Logan, you can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. And if you want to get in the mailbag uh, like Mike did there and send us stuff, uh, Josh Johnson Show at gmail.com. Uh, you can also get in the mailbag by leaving us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, and if you want bonus stuff, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson Show. We have bonus podcasts and video stuff and access to past live shows. Um, and speaking of live shows, we have one coming up uh, October 16th. It's a Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We are doing another one. Um, I can tell you right now, I already plan uh, for that one since it's our our October uh, live show. Um, the the teased several times throughout the show, the uh, creepy ass dolls that jo- uh, that Jess has in our house are probably going to make an appearance at this coming live show, much to mine and Josh's chagrin. Chagrin's one way to put it. Uh, we <laughs> hope you join us for the virtual live, but also that you have a great rest of the day into your weekend. All right. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel. Hit the bell notification because apparently it's the only way YouTube will tell you that something happened. And just tell a friend. That's the biggest thing you could do. Just tell one person in your life that you like, maybe you don't like, that this video happened to you. 
We release the podcast every Thursday on all the podcast apps, so you should find us there and subscribe on those and comment and leave reviews and whatever on all of them. And also, if you want bonus stuff, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Josh Johnson Show. We have bonus podcasts and videos and stuff there, and uh, we'd love to see you 